If y'all take a look at the field, you're gonna see I got water. I got about two inches of rain. And I don't know if y'all can see way back there uh, across the field, but I can actually see from here that the uh, field is turning green. And also the front yard is, uh, I can actually see the grass coming up everywhere. And so the grass is about an inch or two uh, tall. And uh, this uh, this winter wheat, uh, this Forage Max winter wheat, it grows real fast. So I'll probably be grazing it here in about three weeks. And uh, when I grow grass, I make a boatload of money. All right, it's like it's like feeding my animals for free. Uh, it's not free, but it's practically free. It's like $15 a month per animal, $20 a month per animal. And I put on about 75 pounds per animal for that money. And so, uh, you know, and, and uh, today, uh, while I'll, you know, maybe I'll talk about that in a little bit more depth, but I wanted to talk about uh, my perspective of money. And uh, what does money look like when you are in the top point zero 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 zero, maybe even zero one percentile of the entire U.S. economy? And I wanted to talk to you about this because I believe that uh, if I give my perspective, because it's like, OK, it's like if you see somebody who is extremely rich, you are if you hang around rich people other than being born with 100 IQ, you are probably going to have to have at least 100 IQ. If you're 100 IQ, you can effectively learn how to do anything. You're not going to be the most creative individual on the planet. You're not going to come up with these crazy, uh, you know, crazy new inventions. You're not going to be, uh, you know, uh, drawing diagrams of the stars and uh, doing uh, human anatomy and, uh, you know, uh, doing calculus by the time you're five. You're not going to be doing that, but you can effectively learn how to do anything. And so I wanted to talk to you about my honest perspective when it comes to money. How, you know, uh, what does money look like for me? Here's another way. To, here's a way to look at it. A lot of you probably don't understand, but me, when I'm sitting here doing this, and let's say it takes me one hour. In that one hour, I will generate almost $1,200. I don't think that you, uh, and it's like, a, you know, it's like, and, and here's another way to look at it. Last night, I slept eight hours. When I slept and I woke up, I still made money even when I was sleeping. When I fell asleep and by the time I woke up, I had generated about $10,000. That's what money looks like when you're in the top point zero 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 zero, potentially even another zero one percentile of the entire U.S. economy. And I talk about making money in various aspects, and I'll talk about this right now. Because me, it's like, you know, uh, I've already talked about the appreciation of assets, tax, uh, tax deductible assets, and it's like, and it's, it's almost mind boggling. And it's like, when you actually think about how much money I make, I'm not even close to being the richest man on the entire planet. There are legitimately people that make 10,000 times more money than me, 1 million times more money than me. All right. And it's like, you have to, you have to learn to th see things. And it's like, maybe when I give my perspective, it will open your mind. Last night when I fell asleep, I slept eight hours and by the time I woke up, I had made about $10,000 in my sleep. All right, that's what money looks like for me. I generate about $1,200 an hour. Every single hour of every single day, 365 days a year. All right, and if you wanna take a look at it, Let's talk about cattle, okay? Because I've already said that when you have equitable assets, the uh, big idea is that you want to be generating your money through equity. And when you have equity, what are you looking for equity in? Good assets. You are not looking for damaged assets. You are looking for good assets. You don't want to purchase damaged assets. Why would you purchase damaged assets? The asset is going to pay for itself anyway. All right, that's the big idea. When you when you purchase an asset, the big idea is for you to knowledgeably understand what you are purchasing and also have a realistic, objectively straightforward idea of how you are going to posit or how you are going to appreciate the asset pr profitably. That's that's the big idea. And let's talk about this in terms of cattle. Let's say, you know, um, OK, let's just use a, an example. Uh, let's say I, uh, I purchased fifty thousand dollars worth of cattle. I purchased $50,000 worth of cattle. I purchased them knowledgeably. I understand how to run cattle. I understand how to take care of my cattle. And by the time I finish taking care of my cattle, within six months, I have appreciated the animals by 50%. So I had $50,000 worth of cattle. And by the time I sold them, within six months, I had made 75 grand. Okay, let's think about it that way. And if I take my 75 grand and I reinvest all of that money, and uh, I make a 50% return on that money instead of uh, so I started off with 50 grand and I ended up with like 120. 
And let's say I take the 50 grand and I uh, and I uh, pay off my debt and I still have 70 grand left over. All right, that's 70 grand, you know, and it's like, and think about that in terms of the long run. All right, and then it's like if I have 70 grand and I made 70 grand for the year and uh, my accountant is telling me if you don't, uh, if you, uh, you know, you got these animals, but uh, for you to reduce your, in, you know, right now your income tax, you're going to have to pay about 40 grand. You're going to have to pay about 35 grand, right? I mean, my income is whatever. And you're going to have to pay about 35 grand. So I take a look at my situation and I say, well, if I'm going to lose 35 grand and I have these animals right now and I go and purchase $70,000 more worth of animals, I would have to lose like 200 animals for me to lose all of my money. Is that realistically going to happen? No, it's not. Not for me. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's realistically, it's more likely that I get struck by lightning twice. And think about it this way. Think about it like this. And in terms of what I actually got going on, well, when I fell asleep and I woke up, I slept for a good eight hours. And when I fell asleep and when I woke up, my, my assets had appreciated. When my assets are appreciating, I am making money on my business. The equitable value of my business is a multiple of the amount of money that I make. All right. And it's like when I fell asleep and then I woke back up, I slept eight hours. I slept. I slept real good. I, you know, I, I had I slept eight hours. And when I woke up, I had generated myself ten thousand dollars, borderline ten grand. That's what money looks like for me. When you're when you're in this, you know, in this bracket of the economy, when you're in the top point zero 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 zero, potentially even another zero one percentile of the entire US economy, if this video takes me one hour to make, I made one thousand two hundred dollars while I was making this video. My assets are going up in value. My assets are tied to my business. My business is, is worth a multiple of my earnings. Realistically, it's like, you know, me at the end of the day, maybe I have about six, $7,000 a month cash left over, 70 grand a month cash left over, but I also retain equitable assets like my business, my cattle, my land, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and even right now, I effectively, in terms of just straight money, I have so much money that I can do anything that I want within a reasonable degree. What am I going to do with the money? I am going to increase my cash flow opportunity. I'm going to take my money. I'm going to invest half of it so that I can increase the amount of money that I generate. Right? That's the big idea with my money. That's, that's how I think about money. I'm going to talk about my perspective of money. How do I see money? What do I do with money? How much money do I generate? All of these things, I'm going to talk about my perspective, you know, and I'm just going to give you my perspective because chances are you have never seen this before. You've never even considered it. This might be the only chance that you ever get to see it. All right. If you were going to take a look at me and you were going to go into the U.S. economy, the entire U.S. economy, 333.4 million people. You would only maybe find 15,000. It might even be less. It might be 2,000 people. All right, with, you know, I'm telling, you know, and, and I, I was talking about this yesterday and it's like, I wouldn't bet against me. All right. I just wouldn't do it. I mean, you're, you're going to end up selling your soul to the devil if you bet against me. You know, the thing about me is that, you know, uh, I, you know, the thing about me, I've always said that the idea of a strength and a weakness is, is too open to bias for anybody to, to be for an accurate gauge for anything. But me, it's like me, I, you know, uh, if, if given the choice, I will legitimately live where I work and I will work 15 hours a day. And, you know, it's like me right now, I have the choice to do anything. If I wanted to, I could legitimately buy myself a Lamborghini. All right, I could buy myself a Lamborghini. I could buy myself a Rolex. I could buy myself, you know, I could lease myself a small mansion or whatever. And I could, I could effectively, if, if I wanted to do that, I could do that right now. All right, and but I didn't, I you know, the money that I was going to put into a Lamborghini, if I was going to buy a Lamborghini, which I'm not, the money that I would, you know, I'm going to buy a piece of land, right? And the money that I would, you know, go and lease myself a mansion with, I'm going to buy 200 cattle. All right. And so it's like it's like it doesn't matter how you look at the money. The money is the money. You can look at it in terms of Lamborghinis. You can look at it in terms of land. You can look at it in terms of cattle. It doesn't matter however, which way you look at it. It's all the same. All right. Money is money at the end of the day. It's just, you know, it's, it's something that you you trade for something else. Right. I mean, you, wh whatever way you want to look at it, you can look at it. All right. It's like if you want to think about the amount of money that I make in terms of Lamborghinis, and that makes more sense to you and, and, and mansion leases. If that makes more sense to you, then think about it like that. And just understand that me, when I fell asleep last night and I woke up eight hours later, by the time I had woken up, I had generated myself about another $10,000. I make about $1,100 an hour by myself. 
all right that's legitimately how much money that i make and i make that money even when i'm sleeping all right my assets are going up in value you know i've uh, done my due diligence i'm making sure that you know the business is profitable you know i am profitable i'm, I'm drastically profitable you know, I'm taking my money and uh, I'm looking to, you know, increase my cash flow opportunity by uh, by increasing the size of my business, et cetera, et cetera, reducing my income tax burdens, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And it's like if you actually take a look at it in terms of a monetary value, this is going to be something that blows your mind. You I mean, you probably most people have never even thought about this more than likely. You have never even considered this as a possibility in life. But me, I legitimately, when I fell asleep, I woke up eight hours later. And when I woke up eight hours later, I had generated myself another 10 grand. All right. And it's like, if you want to take a look at it in terms of money, you know, think about it this way. Think about it like this. Like, let's take my cattle example for, for example. I start off with $50,000 worth of cattle. When I sell those cattle, I have $75,000. I take that $75,000, I still have $50,000 worth of debt. I take that $75,000 and I go and purchase uh, $75,000 worth of cattle. And uh, when I sell those $75,000 worth of cattle, I effectively have about 120 grand, right? And so I take 50 grand and I pay off my debt. I still have 70 grand. And I go and, uh, you know, and I, uh, well, I mean, realistically, if, you know, if I held on to that 70 grand, I would have to pay about uh, 30 grand in taxes. And so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to reinvest all of it. And then I'm also going to take a loan, you know, uh, you know, and then I'm going to take a loan, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to reduce my income tax burdens as, as substantially as I can. And, you know, it's like, you know, within two years, if I started off with 50 cattle, I would end up with like 400 cattle, something like that, 350 cattle within two years legitimately within two years i would i would have started off with 50 and i would have like i would have like 250 to some something like that animals within two years that's another way to look at how much money is made on this business i make a drastic amount of money on this business i mean you know and if you take a look at my numbers in terms of like the uh the overall u.s economy it's like if you were to go into the u.s economy and look for somebody like me you would be in a room full of 333.4 million people and you would be looking for 15,000 people it might even be as few as 2,000 all right, it's it, you're probably and I, and I talked about this in terms of the uh, the broader picture, but I call it the 100 man analogy. If you've heard from 99 different people who are all effectively failing the exact same way, they've all convinced each other that they're going to fail the exact same way. They, they've convinced us, and and you know, and they probably did not do it maliciously, but they they ultimately what I've always said that the results are important. They did you know you know who knows I mean people may be malicious. You have to understand this, especially you're going to see this a lot if you go into business. People are legitimately malicious. All right, uh, you know it's like people will legitimately steal for money. People will sell their souls for ten. I'm I'm telling you, it's like if you don't think that people are malicious, I mean you're either probably very nice naive or you're very dumb you're one or the other all right i mean it's not you have to understand that people are legitimately malicious there are legitimately people who will not want to do anything but still want to make money all right i mean and i call that what lazy and ambitious right i mean lazy and ambitious i fell out of heaven a seven uh, you know i'm gonna sell myself for ten dollars you know uh, if i come up with some worthless scheme and uh, you know uh, you know you know go abc then it's gonna turn into ex people will legitimately do that or you're gonna see this happen a lot when it comes to money and it's very sad right because it's like i don't know if you understand but if you actually just went out and you you just found your peace with god and you you know and you stopped selling your soul to the devil you could effectively not be broke tomorrow if you felt like it you could be not broke right now if you felt like it if i had no money i could still make myself a million dollars in a year even if i had zero dollars all right and it's like you know it's like i don't know it's like you know maybe if i talk about it for what it is and then maybe you know somebody will be saved i don't know i don't i don't go around trying to save people there is no saving people but at the end of the day it's like you know it's like if you're poor if you're legitimately poor it's like you could be a broke person right now you could have gone from being poor to being broke and if you're broke you can save yourself from being broke in six months if you actually learn how to make money all right it's it's not hard all right. It's just, you know, you've probably never seen it before you're in your, in your entire life, even in, in I've, I've talked about this, but even like right now, even if you're looking right at it, you probably have no idea what you're looking at. You probably don't. 
Most people don't. And even worse, you're probably running off in the wrong way. You are legitimately going 180 degrees in the wrong direction. And you're probably, and if you don't turn on a dime, you are effectively going to die out there by yourself. And you would have actually done the world a favor if you if you're not going to turn the, if you're not going to turn on a dime you would have done the world a favor if you died by yourself out there instead of you know you know you know trying to drag other people into being poor with you right you shouldn't take anybody with you all right and it's like you probably don't even understand what you're looking at like when I say you know I have these assets these assets are tax deductible I am appreciating my assets tax de uh, you know tax free you know via an unreal you know when I when I when I uh, when I uh, increase the value of my asset I am making money via an unrealized gain and I can realize that gain whenever I feel like it is necessary or that it is you know uh, it is uh, you know a good time to do so etc cetera, etc cetera. You know, you probably even when I tell you about it and I tell you 5000 times, you may still legitimately be go run, go running off the wrong way. You may legitimately just keep running off the wrong way. You're not going to turn on a dime. Most people are not. I mean, it's already probably too late. The, the, the damage is permanent. All right. I can almost guarantee it. And, and when I say that, it's like, you know, I hope that, you know, somebody turns on a dime. I mean, and I've already talked about this, but, you know, realistically, maybe one or two people. Maybe, you know, maybe when I say this, it's going to save one or two people from being eternally poor. And I've already said poor, being poor and being broke are two separate things. Being poor is not good. All right. It's, it's more than likely you sold your soul to the devil. More than likely, it's not like you ended up poor because you were a good person. You did not end up poor because you were making a bunch of good choices. You legitimately ended up poor because you sold your soul to the devil. All right. And it's like if you're broke, you can fix being broke in six months. You have to understand that. And it's like, no, there is no we in success. It's not like we made it. We did not make it anywhere. I made it. If you want to make it, you're going to have to make it too. That's that. It just is what it is. There is no we made it. It's, it doesn't exist. When it comes to success, it's successful individuals. There is no we made it. All right. I mean, if you have a successful individual and you have another successful individual and it's like, you know, it's like a, we can work together because you are a successful individual and I'm a successful individual, then you have a group of successful individuals. You do not have a we made it group of successful you know, individuals. All right. I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, I've talked about this in terms of farming, but you know, it's like uh, even if you purchased my farm, uh, you, let's say you you had the money and you purchased my farm. Even if you purchased my farm, everybody on the entire planet, effectively everybody, would immediately bankrupt the thing. You don't. You probably don't even understand when you're watching me that you are potentially looking at the most successful farmer on the entire planet. You probably do not understand that fundamentally. And if you want to think about it in a different way, let's think about it in terms of money. Through my various channels, I am legitimately generating myself almost one thousand. $100 an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I fell asleep and when I woke up, I had made myself almost 10 grand. All right, and, and me, even when I'm making this video, and this is also what I mean by YouTube, it's just, it's just, it's just negligible to me. And in, in all reality, it's like, even when I'm standing here doing this, I am generating a massive amount of money. Just, just by being a farmer, I am generating a massive amount of money. You probably do not understand this. This is probably something that is that, that you have never considered. I, you know, even right now, like me, when I'm just standing here looking at my animals, taking a look at what's going on, I am generating almost one thousand two hundred dollars an hour. And you probably have not considered this. All right, this is what money looks like when you are legitimately in the top point zero 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 zero, potentially even another zero one percentile of the entire U.S. economy. This is what money looks like. All right, and and you know, and it's like it doesn't, you know. I legitimately make money even when I'm sleeping. All right, and 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 so I mean, you know, I'm I'm just looking to give you my perspective. I'm not I'm not looking to boast. I've already said this that me even when I made it, it's like the whole time it's like you know I was you know I had to work almost 15 years to make it. I, it took me 15 years, and I legitimately worked seven days a week. I was working you know I was working seven days a week on this thing, and it took me 15 years to make it. And even when I made it, it wasn't like I you know I was gonna go oh my god you know uh, time to sell my soul to the devil and uh, you know. Uh, and just uh, brag and boast that you know if i wanted to i could legitimately go and buy myself a lamborghini right now with the money that i'm making in the cattle business all right i legitimately could do it uh you know god knows it and i know it and that's enough for me all right i mean that's good enough for me 
And so, you know, and yesterday I was actually at the bank and I was and I was talking to the banker and I am going to finance the entire deal. And so these are the numbers that I got. These are my actual numbers. I'm going to take a loan for, uh, I think it was $305,000. And uh, they're going to finance the down payment for me at 10% interest. It was like 9.75% interest. They're going to finance the down payment at 9.75% interest. And for the rest of the loan, I'm going to get the rest of the loan at six and a half. And so they'll, they'll, they'll finance the down payment at nine and a half or 9.7, about 10%. And then they'll finance the rest of the deal at uh, six and a half. And they'll give me a 30-year term on my down payment, and then they'll give me a 20-year term on my uh, on the on the uh, the remainder amount. And so, if I take a look at the uh, the numbers, uh, you know, and I also you know, because right now I, I actually purchased myself an extra two months via the option contract, right? And so, I'm just going to take my time to go around to the different banks and uh, talk to the different bankers about uh, how much money, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever. What are you gonna? What is? What are your lending terms? I always say that that is the golden question, right? What are your lending terms? And so yesterday I was at the bank and I was talking to the banker. They financed the down payment for me at a ten percent, and then they'll finance the uh, they'll finance the down payment for me at ten percent on a thirty year term, and then they'll finance the rest of it on a twenty year term at uh, at six point five percent interest. And so the when I crunch the numbers, when I take a look at the numbers, it's about two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars a month for the loan. So if I'm going to purchase my new fifty acre field, it's going to cost me about two thousand four hundred about two thousand five hundred dollars a month, and about one thousand dollars a month of that is going to be equity. It's going to be principal that is going back to me. And so effectively, I'm I'm paying one thousand five hundred dollars a month for my new piece of land. It's interest, and on that interest, I'm also going to get a tax deduction. I'm also going to get a tax write-off for that interest on the loan. I'm pretty sure. And uh, yesterday, I was talking to my banker, and I actually had an interesting conversation with the banker. And uh, but uh, the fifteen hundred dollars is effectively uh, tax deductible, and I also have a lender that is willing to lend against land. And so, if I really need to tap the equity on my land, I can also just open a line of credit against it if I need to borrow that. Well, if I need to not borrow, but if I need to utilize that money, then I can just open a line of credit against the land that I'm buying. And so, yesterday I was actually talking to my banker. I was talking to a banker, and and when I was when I first sat down with this banker and I took a look at her, I I, I had a good feeling about this lady. I don't know what it was, but I had a good feeling about this lady it wasn't it was an old lady and uh she just uh, she just gave me a good feeling and i was talking to her yesterday and uh we were talking about business and uh she actually uh, made a recommendation to me and i was like you know i'm pretty sure i'm picking up what you're putting down but she said you should uh she said uh you can write yourself a w2 and i and, and you know and it's like it's like when i think about it it's very obvious right and she said uh you should uh for tax purposes you should be uh writing yourself a check every month as a salary and put it on a w2 and then we just stopped talking for about uh for about 10 seconds and i and for about five about three or five seconds and i looked straight at her and i was like i'm pretty Pretty sure I'm understanding what you're saying because you know if I write myself a, a salary from my business to my personal to my personal w-2 if I do that then I can actually leverage my W-2 income for new P for new land if I want to purchase new land I can just leverage my W-2 income and if I leverage my W-2 income and I do not and I do not collateralize my business then even if my business bankrupts they cannot nobody can take my land away i'm pretty sure that that's what you know because she she, she was talking to me about it and, she, and and i told her i was going to talk to my accountant for it or accountant about it and i'm pretty sure i'm understanding what she's saying and i was like this is this this, this i mean what what a what a wonderful conversation right i was talking to this lady and she uh, she was like you know uh, you should start a you should consider she told me you should consider you know writing yourself a salary every month just give yourself a salary from your business every month you know just essentially just give yourself a w-2 and if you give your and I, and I was like and i was thinking about that and i was like what a good idea because if i give myself a w-2 from my business i am pretty certain that if i give myself a, a w-2 from my business i can actually leverage my personal income instead of leveraging the income from my business i can leverage my personal income to purchase land and if i leverage my personal income to purchase land even if my business even if my business bankrupts i will not lose my land it, i am legally protected from losing assets that are outside of my business 
And I was like, what a wonderful idea. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's what she was trying to get at, but she didn't want to talk to me about that, you know, because it's, it's it might be legal advice and she might not be, a, you know, a, she might not be a qualified or she might get in trouble for giving legal advice. But I'm pretty sure it was legal advice. It, it was good business advice was what it was. It wasn't legal advice. She didn't give me legal advice. It was business advice. And I was like, what a good idea. You know, if I just write myself a W-2 salary every month, if I just pay myself $5,000 a month out of my business and just transfer it over to my personal account and, and give myself a W-2, I can actually just take my W-2 forms to the bank and just leverage that income and then I don't have to tie any land to my, to my business anymore. And I was like, that was, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that that's what she was talking about. And I'm like, that, that, that's actually a, a phenomenal idea. And I'm going to go and talk to my accountant about it. I'm going to, and there are a few things that I want to talk to my accountant about. I want to talk to my accountant about that. But I also want to talk to the, uh, to my accountant about potentially switching my LLC over to an, to a corporation. You know, maybe it's time for me to, to start myself a corporation. Instead of being an LLC, I can start myself a corporation. What are the tax implications of that? What are the benefits of that? Should I do that? Am I making enough money to do that? You know, uh, should I be considering that right now? And so I'm going to start, uh, you know, I'm going to talk to my accountant about the W-2 form. And I'm also going to talk about the, uh, the, the, the idea of switching myself over to a corporation. And so, uh, yep, I, uh, I talked to my banker. Uh, so uh, the, the two financing options that I have right now are either I'm going to pay $2,400 or $2,500 a month for a commercial loan or I'm going to pay $2,800 a month for a, for a seller finance. And effectively, about $1,000 of that loan either way is going to be principal. And so essentially, I'm getting that $1,000 back. If I really want that $1,000, if I really want access to that $1,000, I can just open a line of credit against it. All right. I mean, it's 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 as easy as that. And so, um, you know, I got that figured out yesterday. I still got myself two months to get everything done. And, uh, you know, you know, uh, things are, you know, on uh, November 18th, I actually got the man of the geologist. Uh, going out to the field to check the uh, the field for water. He's going to use the uh, different machines to check uh, the field for water. And if he cannot find water, he's also going to do a consultation for me on where to, to uh, put a playa pond so that I can recharge my own aquifer and then pump the water out to use that as water for the cattle. And so uh, that's something I got going on right now too. And uh, I'm going to get that done. And uh, once that's done and uh, I got all these uh, pieces moving and everything's going to come together. Uh, well, I'm not going to say everything's going to come together because that's famous last words. Granted that I do my due diligence, uh, you know, uh, my animals right now, I got four or five animals that are ready to go to market effectively in the next two or three weeks. And uh, I'll make money on them. And then, uh, you know, uh, and I was actually thinking about this, but right now for me to get my new property set up, it's actually cost me about $6,000 a month. It's cost me somewhere between like a $5,500 and $7,000 a month, something like that. It, you know, I've, 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 I'll probably end up uh, over the over the whole course of the thing, I'll end up putting about a, about a thirty five grand into my property over about a, over six months. And so I don't know about, I don't know exactly what that number, but it, you know, over six months, I'll end up putting about $35,000 into my new property. And, uh, and here's another way to look at it, uh, you know, uh, over the, and even, uh, but after I do that, uh, you know, once I get through that part of uh, the financial burden for my, uh, for my new field is going to be effectively about $2,500 a month. And so I will have an excess of about $3,000 a month left over. Uh, and the big idea right now is that I'm going to. You know, once I get everything done, uh, once I get everything paid for, I'll still probably have about uh, about 25 to 27 cattle. I'll still have about 25 to 27 cattle even after I get everything paid for. And the uh, the animals are probably going to be about uh, 500 pounds, uh, 550 pounds. And uh, if I uh, take them, uh, well, I'm, I'm, and, well, once I get my new property figured out, once I get everything figured out, uh, once I get everything done, I'm not going to be liquidating animals unless I need the money. Or, you know, I do not have the capacity to appreciate the value of the animal anymore. That's the only time that I'm going to actually uh, liquidate my animals. And so it's like if I need three grand, if I need two thousand five hundred dollars, I'll just sell two animals. All right. Uh, you know, I'll sell two of my seven hundred fifty pound animals or whatever. And then uh, effectively, the big idea 
idea is to just is to just grow the size of my herd because if I grow the size of my herd and I do it properly, I do it knowledgeably, I do it in a way that is profitable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? I call this appreciating your assets profitably, knowledgeably doing it. And, and when I do that, uh, you know, I would anticipate that within about the next six months, my total herd count is going to be about 120 animals. That's my realistic, uh, you know, and uh, you can hold me to it. You can write it down uh, within about five or six months. I'm going to have about 120 cattle. That, that's, that's what I anticipate that I will have if I, re, if I reinvest my earnings and I, uh, and I move forward with the, you know, and, and, I, and I just get everything done. And, and right now things are going good. I'm not, you know, I don't want to give, uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, give myself bad luck or anything. I don't want to make it seem like I'm being arrogant or cocky, but everything is, it, things are actually going way better than I ever anticipated. All right. I mean, I, I did not know that things were going to go this well for me. I had, I had zero idea that things were going to go this well for me. Uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing way better than I ever anticipated. Uh, you know, and uh, within about five months, I anticipate, uh, uh, logically anticipate that I will have about 100 and uh, about 20 cattle. I will, uh, it might take me a little bit longer, but I'll have to see, uh, you know, because it's going to take me some time to put these animals together. Even if I go and get the money, it's going to take me some time to put the animals together. And, you know, I got to take care of the animals properly, too. And so I believe that within about five or six months, I will have about 120 animals. And, uh, you know, and the big idea is like if it, if it costs me whatever, you know, $5,000 a month and I'm raising 120 cattle, you know, the $5,000 a month is, is negligible money. It, it, it honestly doesn't even it, it's, it's a non-factor. All right. I mean, it's a non-factor. It's probably going to it's not going to cost me five grand. And, uh, you know, and the idea is to just generate as much money as I can. And then once I start doing that, I'm going to look to buy a new piece of land. And, I, and when I go and buy a new piece of land, when I have about a, maybe about $200,000 cash saved up, it'll probably take me about a year. You know, for me to save about 200 grand in terms of just straight cash, like if I were to, you know, just continue to run my business and just save cash, because here's the thing, if I were just running my business and just saving cash right now, I would already have about 50 grand. All right, I would have about 55 grand. And so if I'm legitimately, you know, if going to save $200,000 cash, it might actually take me like 10 months. And this is also what I mean by you don't want to be in a city. It might take me about a year. And this is also what I mean by you don't want to be thinking about making all of your money cash. Because think about it this way. I'm going to generate about 10 million in equity over the next uh, maybe about 365 days. I will generate about 10 million in equity. But, you know, after it's all said and done, maybe I, I have about a, you know... You know, uh, it's going to take time for me to make a profit. It's going to take time for me to net a profit from that equity, right? Just because I have a $10 million net equity, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm going to start producing a, a instantaneous return on that money. So, you know, within the next year, I would probably only have about a quarter million dollars cash. All right. And I'm going to have $10 million in equity and about a quarter million dollars cash about two hundred thousand dollars cash and this is also what i mean by it's not a good idea to think about making all of your money via cash you don't need all your money via cash depending on what you're trying to buy this is how you should this is how i did it if you're looking to buy a piece of land this is how i did it if you're looking to purchase assets for your business this is how i did it if you want legal protection for your business this is how i did it but also go and ask a lawyer this is not legal advice all right if you want to reduce your income tax burdens this is how i did it uh, you know, this is this is not uh, this is not accounting advice. Uh, go and ask your accountant. All right. Uh, you know, these are just these are the things that I am doing on a daily basis. And I you know, and I generated a massive amount of money doing it this way. I generated a massive amount of money. Like I don't. And, and another way to actually look at it is that when I fell asleep and then I woke up, I had made about ten thousand dollars in my sleep. Now, that's another way to look at it. And, and you know, uh, it, you know, in terms of equity, I could probably generate about 10 million in a year. But in, in terms of just straight cash, how much money am I going to have left over cash? It's probably only going to be about 200 to 250 thousand dollars cash left over. I mean, and, and I'm going to write myself a salary and I'm going to talk to my accountant about, uh, you know, what should my salary be? Uh, you know, I want to leverage my personal income for new land. Is that is that possible? Does that give me legal protection? you know, uh, from a uh, bankruptcy, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And so, you know, I got, but that's, that is what I'm doing and that's how I did it. All right. And so that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.